to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in response to paul's question about the holy spirit some of john's disciples said we've not even heard as whether there is a holy spirit in essence they said holy spirit what is the Holy Spirit? And friend, that question and that idea is such an important question for us to consider today. What do we know from the Bible about the Holy Spirit of God? That's the topic for our lesson today, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our study together. We want to encourage you to locate your Bible and have it handy to use today as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study on this very important subject. Friend, we're so glad that you joined us today. We want you to know that our lesson today is being brought to you by members and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area, they'd love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. Uh, you'd be an honored guest at any of their services. You'll find friendly people there who love God and who are concerned about God's truth. If you'd like to study more about God's Word or you'd like to sit it down and know more about the church, they'd be happy to talk to you about that there. Friend, we also would love to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better here at The Gospel of Christ. Please check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have video and audio lessons on every book of the Bible, a multitude of topics and subjects, and it's all available free of charge. We've got audio lessons, video lessons, transcripts, study questions. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, we make that available to you free of charge. Again, just check out our website or contact us at the end of the program and we'll be at the information given in the program and we'll be glad to make that available to you. Today we're considering a very important subject and that's the subject of the Holy Spirit of God. As we mentioned in Acts chapter 19, uh, Paul discussed with certain disciples of John about the Holy Spirit and their response was, we don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. is there, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. What are you talking about there in essence? And so like John's disciples, there's a lot of confusion, maybe misinformation on the Holy Spirit. Over the centuries or over the years, uh, several factors have contributed to this. There's been controversy among God's people, uh, a, a rise in the movement of the sensationalism, emotionalism that is attached to some religious groups that all they want to focus on is uh, miracles and tongue speaking and things like that has led to some of this. And a lack of Bible study has led to it as well. Today we want to examine some basic facts about the Holy Spirit that hopefully will help equip each one of us to know the third person of the Godhead better and to respond correctly to false teaching. And so let's think about today the nature of the Holy Spirit. What can I know about the Holy Spirit of God? We know from the Bible that the Holy Spirit is a, a person, that He's a part of the Godhead, just like the Father. And just like Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit is a part of and a person of the Godhead. We know this because He has the qualities of a person. For example, 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, The Spirit expressly says, the Holy Spirit of God at times speaks and He says things throughout the Bible. And so he has that quality that is related to persons or personalities that they have the ability to communicate or to speak. The Holy Spirit has the ability to feel. James 4 verse 5, don't vex the Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 4 verse 30, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, like a person, has the ability to have emotions, to feel, to be grieved, to be hurt, 
to rejoice, no doubt, would be a part of that as well. And so we know he's a person, but we also know from the New Testament writing that he is a masculine person. Not an it, not an inordinate it. He's a masculine person. John 16, 13, Jesus said this, When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he'll guide you into all truth. He, listen to that word, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit of God. Hebrews 10, 15, again referred to in the masculine. When a personal pronoun is placed with the Holy Spirit, it is a masculine pronoun, and so like the Father and like the Son, He carries masculinity in that as well. But we also know that from the teaching of the Bible, as it relates to the nature of the Holy Spirit, that He's a part of the Godhead. By Godhead, we mean Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, look in your Bible, if you would, in 2 Corinthians 13. Look in verse number 14. The Bible says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Here we have in one verse the mentioning of all three parts of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Genesis 1 verse 2, at the, He was even there at the beginning of creation. The Spirit of, the Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the deep. And so God is the Holy Spirit, just like the Son and just like the Father, he is God. He's a part of the Godhead. Now, a question that we need to consider then, since He has the ability to speak, He's a part of the Godhead, is how does the Holy Spirit communicate with people? There's a lot of people that believe that the Holy Spirit communicates through uh, nudges or intuitions or some inner leaning that they get. Friend, th that's a highly subjective and feeling-based idea. How do you know that was the Holy Spirit? How can you be sure that what you were feeling was from God? And friend, not only is it highly subjective and feeling-based, that's just not taught in the Bible. The Holy Spirit, in the Bible we are taught, the Holy Spirit communicates the way that human beings communicate today by language, or through words. Listen to 2 Samuel 23, verse 2. The Spirit of God, David says, The Spirit of God spoke by me. His word was on my tongue. How did the Holy Spirit communicate through David? The Spirit's word was on David's tongue. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. The Spirit expressly says. When we find the Spirit communicating with people in the Bible, it's through words. The same way that men and women communicate today, the major way we communicate is through our words and our language. And that's the way the Holy Spirit communicates with us today is through words, ultimately through the Word of God. Well, let's then think about another idea as it relates to the Holy Spirit of God. And these two are definitely connected. What then is the Holy Spirit's what was his role in salvation? Like the function of the Father, setting the scheme of redemption in order, overseeing that in some ways, and the Son who brought that to earth and made salvation possible, the function of the Holy Spirit is unique in salvation in that his part was to reveal God's Word to humanity. The revelation of the message of salvation is what the Holy Spirit brought to mankind. Where would we be without the Word of God that tells us about salvation and about Jesus Christ? A couple of passages to look at in your Bible related to this. Look at how this works. Look at Revelation chapter 1. Turn in your Bible, and I want you to see how this works in the Holy Spirit giving us the Word of God. Look at what the Bible says in verse number 11. John was told to write these things, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Now watch this. What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Merc, Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Now look in that same book, chapter 2, verse number 11. Jesus said, He who has an ear... 
let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And so the Spirit said something to those churches. How did he do it? What John heard, here's what happened. The Lord dictated his message to the inspired apostle John. John wrote down what the Lord dictated or told him. What the Lord dictated to John and what John wrote down was called what the Holy Spirit says. Thus the Holy Spirit's work was the revelation of the Father and the Son's message to man. The Holy Spirit, He didn't uh, originate new truth. The Father and the Son, the Father gave us the truth. The Holy Spirit revealed what the Son, what the Father and the Son originated and did. Listen to John 16, 13. And when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own authority. Whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. And so He wasn't speaking in and of Himself. What happened, what God, the Godhead decided on, He revealed that message. Now, friend, there's a great passage, I think, that helps us understand this with great clarity. And I want you to turn there in your Bible. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want you to look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 as we think about the Spirit in Revelation. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want you to notice verses 9 through 13. The Bible says this, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, what? The things which God has prepared for those who love Him. God has revealed them, how? To us through His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man can know the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is from God. And notice why. That we might know the things God has freely given to us by God. Now notice what Paul says next. It's so important. These things, what? The things the Spirit revealed for those who love God. These things we also speak. How? Not in words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You know, there are several things we learn from this passage that are so crucial in salvation, in revelation. First, we learn it takes a revelation to know God. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, the things God prepared for those who love Him. How do I know what God has prepared? It takes a revelation to know God and to know His plan. Can I know God exists by looking at the world? Yeah, but that's all I can know. I can't know who, I can't know who He is. I can't know what He expects. I can't know how to live with Him. I can't know how to be saved by creation. I can, creation shouts out to us there's a God, but it takes a revelation to know Him. That revelation had to be made in words. These things we speak in words which the Spirit teaches. And friend, that revelation of God spoken in words came through the mouths of the men directed by the Holy Spirit of God. Paul said, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom speaks, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Thus, the Holy Spirit of God passed on God's truth to us in the pages of the inspired writing of the Bible. God, if I want to know God's will, where do I look? Where are God's, where are the Holy Spirit's words found? Right here in the pages of God's divine will. Well, that again leads us to a question that naturally we've answered, but it's an important question. If I have to find the Holy Spirit's Word to know God, where is that? Friend, the inspired men of God to whom this promises, these promises were made, they're not with us today. Paul and John and, and, and Mark and, and, and all the inspired, they're not, they're not here today. But their Word is here with us. We have the Holy Spirit's Word on salvation today 
in the pages of the Bible. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says this, The Word of God is living, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the vision of soul and spirit, joins tomorrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, and thus we find the Holy Spirit's message in the writing of the New Testament. There's a passage I want you to think about. Hebrews 1 verse 1, God, who long ago in various times and various ways spoke in time past to the fathers, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. How has God spoken to us by His Son? The Spirit said, John, what you see, write in a book and send it to the churches. And friend, we have God's book, the Word of God today. And that is the Holy Spirit's message through inspired writers in the New Testament today. And that's exactly what Paul said his words were. 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 37. I want you to think about this passage with me. Paul said, If any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things which I write to you. These are the commands of God. When Paul picked up pen and he wrote the inspired letters that we have in the New Testament, the end result, whose words was that? The things that I write to you, these are the commands of God. Friend, when I read the, when I read the Gospel of Matthew, when I read the Gospel of John, when I read the writings of, of um, Paul or I read the book of Acts, Whose word is that? Although the Holy Spirit directed it, although men were used as instruments, the end result is the Word of God. And friend, here's what's so great about the Holy Spirit's revelation. Thank God for that revelation because it is able to make me complete spiritually before God. Listen to 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. The Bible says this, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Profitable for what? For doctrine, for correction, for instruction, for teaching and righteousness, that the man of God, listen to it, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Everything I need, I've got in the Bible. Listen to John 16, 13. The Bible, Jesus said, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He'll guide you into all truth. Friend, can I ask you kindly, can you have more than all? You say, well, no. That's a silly question, right? You can't have more than all. The Holy Spirit gave us in the Bible all truth. Do I have everything I need today? Toward the end of the New Testament, Peter said in 2 Peter 1, 3, that according to His divine knowledge, God has given to us, listen to it, all things for life and godliness. Friend, here's what's great today about the Holy Spirit's message. This book, the Bible, it has everything you need to be complete, to know God, and to get to heaven. And friend, if the Bible alone makes us complete before God and gives us everything we need for life and godliness, why then do, would someone say, I need more than the Bible to be saved? To be saved, the Bible's good, but you need our book also. Or God gave us another revelation. Or you need this to, you need to, wait a minute now. If the Bible is the Holy Spirit's Word, if the Holy Spirit's Word makes us complete, gives us everything we need, and is able to save us completely, friend, I don't need anything else but the Bible. And along with that, here's the really good news. Friend, I hope this will be encouraging to you. If I do what the Bible says, and I follow God's will, and I obey His teaching, then I can know, I can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm right with God and that, that everything I do is pleasing to God and right in His sight. I, I don't have to wonder. I don't have to worry. I don't have to think to myself, maybe I'm saved or maybe I'm not saved and maybe I've done the right thing or maybe I haven't done the right thing. Because the Bible makes us complete and you've got the Bible, 
You can read it for yourself, and you can know you're right with God. Now, let's then turn our attention to another idea as it relates to the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit leading or nudging me down some path today? Friend, there's a whole host of people who say that the Holy Spirit is still leading or nudging or pointing people in some direction. And friend, you just don't find that idea in the Bible. And nobody would want to hold a doctrine that the Bible doesn't teach, right? In fact, this kind of thinking could cause a person to teach things that are just simply not taught in the Scripture under the guise of the Holy Spirit moved me to do this. You could, somebody could teach anything and say, the Holy Spirit told me to teach it. Someone said, the Holy Spirit told me if you don't send in a million dollars today or if you don't send in money today, you're not going to be right with Him. And people might say, well, well, the Holy Spirit told me to do that. I better do that. But did the Holy Spirit really tell me that? How do you know He did that? A person could teach anything under that guise, and you might not know one way or the other. But more importantly, this kind of thinking, if we're not careful, can lead to a further departure from truth and definitely a downward spiral in people's lives. Is the Holy Spirit still working miraculously in people today? And here's what I mean by that. Is He still inspiring new revelation today? Are people still doing miracles like we find in the New Testament? Meaning this now, please don't misunderstand. Am I saying we don't believe in the power of prayer and that God doesn't heal people? That's not what I'm saying. But are men still raising people from the dead? Are men still casting out demons? Are men still healing someone instantaneously who has a withered arm? Or are men making, by the Holy Spirit, making blind people automatically see? Is that still happening? Does the Bible teach that's happening today? Would you open your Bible with me to 1 Corinthians 13? Friend, I want you to see that the Bible teaches we're not living in the age where men have that miraculous power anymore. The Bible teaches that. Look in your Bible in 1 Corinthians 13. I want you to look in verses 8 through 10 with me. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 10. Paul says, on the great subject of love, Paul says, love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, listen now, whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, that's tongue speaking, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, again in the context, miraculous knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away with. The prophesying, the ability to prophesy, the tongue speaking, the miraculous knowledge, all that was said to cease. When? When that which is perfect comes. Jesus is the perfect, but He's already come, and when He's spoken about, it's come again. We're not talking about Jesus. What else is the perfect? Well, friend, the only thing that is referred to as complete, the Greek word there for perfect is teleon, complete. And you know what else that's used for? The Bible. James 1.25 we have, James says, we have the perfect or complete law of liberty. What was the purpose of miracles? You ever ask that question? According to Mark 16, 20, and Hebrews 2, verses 1 through 4, miracles were to confirm that what was spoken was the Word of God. Let me illustrate. Two men stand up to speak. Both men say they have a message from God. Both men's messages are diametrically opposed to you. They're teaching totally opposite things. How do I know in the first century without a hard copy of the Bible that I can check, how do I know which one's right? Well, this man just cast out a demon. This man raised the dead. This man healed the sick. God put a big flashing sign on this man, man saying, He's my servant, this man. We don't, he, he can't do anything. Miracles were God's confirmation. This person was the spokesman of God. Well, can we know today what message is true? Sure. I have the Bible. I can search the Scriptures daily 
and see if what I'm being told is true. Acts 17, 11. And so miracles were never intended to last forever. The Bible says they were to cease when we got the perfect, complete law of liberty in the Word of God, and we're not living in that miraculous day and age today. Does that mean God's dead? That's not what we're saying. Does God work in providential means? Does God answer prayer? Absolutely. But men don't have the ability to raise the dead, to cast out demons, to heal the sick. Hear me well on this, okay? If there are people today who can heal sick people and they don't go to St. Jude's Hospital and heal every sick child in there, shame on them. Why are people not doing that if they don't have that ability today? Friend, the, the reason is that age is ended. People who say they can do that are charlatans. That gift was never intended to last forever. It was given for a certain time frame during the writing of the New Testament for the infancy of the church to help them grow and mature until they got the complete will of God. And so what do we know about the Holy Spirit of God today? Thank God for His work. Thank God for what He did in giving us the revelation. Thank God for the sacrifice that was made on His part as well in, sin, in the Son of God coming to earth. And ultimately, for the fact that He's the seal in the redemption for every Christian's salvation. Ephesians 1, verses 12 and 13. And so, friend, we ask you today, are you a child of God? Have you obeyed the gospel? Are you a member of the Lord's church? If not, we'd love to study more with you about that. Maybe you want to become a Christian, but you don't know what to do. Friend, we have lessons available on that on our website. We'd love to sit down and talk to you. Members of the Lord's Church would love down to sit down and talk to you. If we can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to let us know. And may God bless each of us as we strive to do His will. And please join us next time for another study from God's Word. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel.